What do you think Fernando Tatis is doing right now? How do you think he's watching this? I was going to say, I don't know if he's watching at all. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that's <clears throat> I mean, probably tough to watch. Not only that, like I, th- it's the element of I should be there, one. And two, I mean, a lot of the, his teammates threw him under the bus. Like, I don't know that he's like, all right, come on, guys. When like half the fucking players hold, hold, on that team on. were out. like, fuck Time him. Out. Time out. Yeah, like uh, I, I have no problem with that. But the the phrasing of that, they didn't throw him under the bus. They called him out. Yeah, they didn't have his back. Is what I mean. Okay. All right. Because like throwing, like for me, just when you throw somebody under the bus, that's like you have, like you've got something that you've done. Nobody else knows about this, and now here I am going to put you on blast for my own benefit or to avoid any. So. Yeah, like they, they just didn't have his back in a situation like guys just had opinions about yeah. his his behavior or his choices. Yeah, I, I think what you're saying can mean that. But I, I also think that throwing him under the bus means like, yeah, like, fuck you. Here you go. Like, I think that they threw him to the wolves instead of like shielding and guarding him, which I'm not saying that that was wrong to do. I, I think if it were an isolated incident, obviously, it's a major fuck up. Uh, a costly fuck up. And when you're the Padres and you're saying, well, you know, we just got to hang in there until Tatis gets here. And then, you know, he's not coming at any point this year. Then, yeah, then you're like, all right, fuck this guy. And and this is not the first time that uh, he's made a mistake that has been costly there you go. for us. There you go. That's the whole take home message is as teammates, Jared, when a guy does it the first time, it's we'll put our arms around him mm-hmm. the second time. And beyond that, it's now obvious that you're making these decisions without the team in mind. So, who, who, excuse me, why the fuck would we keep you in mind? Right. It's that why simple. would we a, wear arrows for you when right. you wouldn't do that for us? Like nope, when you, we're moving what, on. I think for me, it's that one line. It's that it's like I could have a little bit more sympathy for him uh, if coming into spring training when he like the whole motorcycle accident. And the uh, the injury that caused him to miss the the beginning of the season. When you get which asked one? about it, and then you say which one, it's mm-hmm. like I'm telling you on several occasions. Like I got into a motorcycle accident, and I, that wasn't a come to Jesus moment where I was like, maybe I should not do this. Like I, I, I'm getting paid a lot of money. My teammates depend on me. The fans depend on me. The ownership depends on me. Maybe I should just not do this to protect myself. And then he just did it again and again and again. And he kept getting hurt on the motorcycle without giving a single fuck about his teammates. And then after the PED thing, you're saying once again, like Joey did the the breakdown on it. Check out the video on uh, Baseball Doesn't Exist on YouTube. And it is somewhat plausible that he wasn't taking steroids to gain muscle to be able to actually perform in the field. Maybe he accidentally, uh, unknowingly took something uh, for for whatever other reason other than like healing and getting back on the field. Maybe that is plausible. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt there. Even still, how hard is it to contact the team trainer and say, can I take this? Like it, it's one. It's just. It's a matter of giving a fuck about the something bigger than you. Well, due the diligence, team, your due teammates, diligence. the That's organization, all. the fans, the owners that are paying you three hundred and forty million dollars. How difficult is it to pick up the phone and say, "Can I take this?" It's not that difficult at all. All you have to do is care and give a shit. And he proved that he does not. He does not care enough. He does not give a shit enough. And that's why he's not playing in the postseason right now. Well, maybe he's just like a epic risk taker, dude. Maybe he's adrenaline junkie. He likes motorcycles <laughs> and he saw it had cost the ball. He's like, that's illegal. But what if I take it? What if I get away with it? <laughs> Obviously, it's, it's just a cream. It won't help me at all. But like, it's a risk. And he got, you know, that heartbeat, you know, because that's a real drug. A- Adrenaline's a real drug. Fuck yeah, it is. So Ep- Epinephrine? Epinephrine. Mm. Glands, all that glands it goes to your glands and your psyche a lot you know what i'm saying like that's a possibility glands what on glands i want to know glands. is if he if they win does he get a ring yeah yes well Hell. Hell no yeah. he didn't play a game this year it's it's an it, there's no universal rule but usually oh. The organization, yeah, like I've seen, like organizations will give out rings if you even play one. If you're on the field for a single out recorded, you'll get a ring. 
I don't know that just being in the organization is enough to get a ring. Like he didn't contribute. I bet you he's, his he's teammates would vote list. him he's, not getting one. Well, they, uh, hmm. tell you that, that, <laughs> that would be a very, very interesting conversation. I, and that's going to be, I, I, we talked about this on the Red Sox podcast there. We think that there's a chance that they just trade him. That, How do you I mean, walk back into that clubhouse? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I'll say this. If Marcelo Zuna has walked back into a clubhouse, Fernando Tatis Jr. can walk back into a clubhouse. 